Hi folks, I'm Joe from Premier One Supplies, and today we're going to talk about putting ear tags in goat kids. First off, why use ear tags? Well, ear tags identify the animal. They uh, help identify the sire, the dam, what year the animal was born, and even time of year the animal was born. Also, uh, if an animal is a male or female, depending on the placement of the tag. There are two basic types of tags, scrapey tags and management tags. Management tags are more so for the producer specifically for identifying stock on their own farm. Scrapey tags are for breeding animals that are going to leave the farm. It's a federal program. If you have any questions on the scrapey program, call 1-866-USDA-TAG to get your local APHIS office information. So what exactly can be put on an ear tag? You can do your farm's logo, the animal's individual flock number, your federal flock number, or just contact information for your farm in case the animals get out. Um, ear tags can also be used to denote male or female. At Premier, if we have an ear in the, a tag in the right ear, that means it's a female. And if there's a tag in the left ear, that means it's a male. So if you have large numbers of animals, it's pretty handy to quickly identify which is which. Ear tags also come in a number of colors. We can use these to designate a single year. So for 2017, we could use orange, purple for 2018, and so on and so forth on down the line. When is the best time to tag an animal? We prefer to do it when they're about a week old or younger. Uh, that way they're small, easy to handle, and the flesh on the ear is not overly thick. Uh, older animals, they have thicker flesh on the ear, which means it's going to take a little bit longer to heal. Uh, they're also a bigger animal, so that means you have to wrestle them rather than just hold them. Time of the year also makes a difference. Hot, humid means you're going to have chances of infections and flies. Uh, cool and dry reduces those chances. The two pieces of equipment when ear tagging are the ear tags. Ear tags have a male side, the pin, and a female side. The male side gets pushed in to the female side. This is a typical strip of tags that are already attached, so when you use them, you would break them apart and then put them onto the applicator. This is the device that puts the ear tag into the ear. Uh, most applicators have uh, two jaws that are specifically fit to each side of the tag, so one fits, holds the male side and one holds the female side. We'll cover that in a little bit. There are a few other items involved with ear tagging. Uh, you can use a lubricating disinfectant. Uh, that'll help the tag slide in easier. Also, it disinfects the tag. So if you're in a barn setting, uh, it prevents any additional germs from getting into that ear tissue. And we also use a fly spray. Uh, that way it'll kill any flies that may try to get near it or uh, deter flies as well. Uh, this is Catron 4. Uh, we use this all over on our farms. The main ingredient in that is permethrin. So what are the best ways to hold a kid for ear tag placement? Well, this one is being very well behaved. I could very well sit here and place the tag. Another option is to place the kid between your legs, hold its head, and place the tag. This option offers you a little more control when holding a kid. On this mini tagger, the male tag slides over the pin. And the female tag slides into the jaw. This button holds the tag in place prior to placement. To place a one-piece tag in an applicator, the tag simply slides into place, but note the cutout in the jaw is meant to hold the female side of the tag. And make sure the tags, male pin and female cutout, line up. So where do you place the tag? in the ear. If you go too close to the skull, the flesh is very thick and it'll take a little bit longer for it to heal. So avoid that. Towards the edge or the tip, 
The flesh is thinner, and if the ear tag is caught, that'll increase the chances of it being torn out. So stay towards the center of the ear. But also make sure to avoid any of the veins in the ear. I'm going to place my tag. Uh, you can have the male pin either on the inside or the outside of the ear. Uh, I'm going to go th from the inside, uh, making sure I'm avoiding any veins. I'm now going to apply the tag. And let's go. Make sure that the tag independently spins within the ear. Apply a quick spray of the fly spray. You don't want to spray too much fly spray or apply too much disinfectant to the tag because that could disturb the bond between the mother and the uh, kid. Uh, that because it'll change the smell of the animal. So if you spray too much, uh, it could disturb bonding a little bit. Uh, I don't believe we'll have th an issue with these two over here. On occasion, a tag will fall out or be torn out. So how do you replace a tag? Individual management tags for your specific flock can be replaced or reprinted. For replacement scraping tags, contact your local APHIS office. This boar goat has a rather fleshy ear, so it's easy to find a spot to place the tag. But what if you have a breed such as a La Mancha? Well, depending on the specific goat, they can be tagged. There is enough flesh there for you to tag. Uh, otherwise, you can uh, tattoo the inside of the ear with the specific animal's number. If you have any questions after today, please contact the American Goat Federation or Premier One Supplies. Their respective websites are AmericanGoatFederation.org and PremierOneSupplies.com. Have an excellent day.